there and Hello. welcome back to our channel. I'm Nikki. I'm Rachel and we're the Stitch Sisters. So in this video we're going to be talking about denim. Denim. Denim! denim. <laughs> How it's made and the different treatments that are used to create different looks and different colours. So let's start first of all by talking about the different types of denim that you will see when you're shopping for them or when you're buying jeans. So sometimes you will see a denim referred to as raw mm -hmm. and sometimes it will be washed. Yes. And sometimes it will be bleached and sometimes it will be stonewashed and you'll see lots and lots Rigid, of different terms. Rigid, acid washed. Yeah. <laughs> so many different terms. There's so many and there's more coming out all of the time, especially if you are buying uh, jeans from the shops. They are coming out with new technology all the time. Yes. But all denim used to be raw. So if we go back to uh, the shrink fit era of <laughs> Levi's when, when people used to sit in the bath until their jeans fit them to the shape of their body. Back in the 40s and 50s. Yeah, when be... denim was workwear, which is mm. how it became popularized, mm. um, was basically uh, that the denim is dyed and then it is treated. Um, it's treated with this uh, starch that protects, it's called the sizing process. Mm -hmm. And it's this pr protective starch layer that protects the actual yarns themselves so that when they're woven together during the weaving process, they have mm -hmm. less chance to break. Um, so a raw denim hasn't had any of that washed out. It's not had all of the excess dye washed out, mm. it's not had the sizing, the starch washed out, and that's why a raw denim will be a much deeper colour and it will yeah. be much stiffer. Yes. So, to demonstrate that, we've got two samples of denim here that are both in this deep indigo colour. Now, I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera, but this is a uh, raw denim, and this, this one, one is washed. Is washed. And so if we, 350 GSM. This one's a little bit heavier, but if we kind of stand it up, then this one I could probably make stand up by itself because it's still so stiff mm -hmm. that because it is hasn't had that the excess dye and the starch washed out of it, which yeah. is what makes it raw. It's had no softening basically. Yeah. And then this is the washed one, which yeah. Well, <laughs> you can you can hopefully you'll be able to this one is crispy. It's got a stiffness to can't it. Bunch that. You can can't punch yeah, that. Listen, up. listen to that. You can hear how stiff it is. And then this one is not any. I mean, it's still making a noise, but it's it's softer to the hand. But you can see that this one is much softer on the top mm -hmm. than this one is. Yeah. Um, just because of that washing process. Yeah. So basically, this one is still similar in color because it's not had a lot of the dye washed out. Although no. you can start to see some of the white fibers coming through, whereas on this one you can't see any really. Um, but it's mainly that that starch has been washed. Out. Mm -hmm. And the difference is that basically, if you were to make a pair of jeans out of this without yeah. washing it, um, then you would need to size up because they will shrink to fit. Yes. That's what shrink fit meant. So basically, in the process of washing a raw denim, mm -hmm. the shrinkage could be as much as 10%. Yeah. Whereas on a washed denim, you're still going to get some shrinkage, but it's, it's probably going to be 2 2 3%, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. So basically, um, if you like the look of raw denim, you've got two choices. You can either wash it before you sew with it. Yeah. Now, the benefit of that is that you're not going to have to worry so much about the shrinkage mm -hmm. and about the colour loss. Um, but the downside to that is at the moment, this has such a lovely, sharp uh, quality to it that cutting it would be really accurate and All sewing it would oh. be really accurate. Yeah. Um, and you would get a much nicer finish if you were to make your jeans before you wash this fabric. Yeah, because of all the starch that's in it, basically, that, that, will, will that will help the actual sewing and pressing process. Yes, so if you were to do that, you would definitely want to size up at mm. least one size, mm -hmm. and then you would want to shrink them to fit. So the first time you washed them, you'd wash them on quite a hot wash, or you could mm. soak them in the bath in hot water. Mm. Um, and you might do that two or three times until they are the perfect yeah. fit for you. Um, or you could do what they used to do and sit in a hot bath in them. <laughs> the, the traditional thing that Levi's used to say, and nowadays they still say this, if you're a true denim head, as yes, they call it, absolutely. you should buy raw denim jeans or make raw denim jeans, mm -hmm. and then you should wear them for at, three least, months. at least three months, at least, or, or six, six months, yeah. without washing them. So you wear them 
just and you spot clean any parts if you you know drop your salad on it or whatever <laughs> you can <laughs> you can you can that uh, you can then just sort of spot clean it but other than that you have to wear them and wear them and wear them and what that means is that they the fibers start to mold to your body they start to understand how you are wearing them how your body is the the, the, the you indigo you'll get that friction but the indigo will start to fade a little bit as you're wearing them and in places like that. you'd expect those so, whisker areas on your crotch or on your knee the backs, backs of your knees. knees at the hem and things like that because they're rubbing against your shoes and against your feet the excess dye will then get washed away and yeah. then what they call the true character, character. of the denim is revealed yes. so you'll then see after that wash that you've got a lot more wearing in yeah. them than you thought you had it's really interesting it I is. think it's a really it's interesting me. process it's not for me I couldn't it's not wear for jeans me. for six months no um, but that's but then it, you know that's the traditional way of doing it but nowadays the technology has come on so that we don't need to do that yes so if you're using a standard washed denim, denim anything that isn't a raw denim mm -hmm. you can make the size that is your size on the sewing pattern. You yes. don't need to worry about making up or making down mm -hmm. unless you're making with a different style of denim than what the pattern is recommending. Yes. So that's exactly. the only alteration you would need to think about. Like if you're using a stretch denim mm -hmm. and it says to use a non-stretch, then you might want to, to size down that kind uh, of thing. Um, so yes. what we're gonna do is we will show you all of the raw denim samples that we have here so you can see the range of colors and things mm -hmm. that they come in. Um, but what we actually plan to do to save you the hassle of worrying about it yourself <laughs> is we're going to take a sample from each of these in fact we've already done it we've yeah. just got a bit more work to do and we're going to wash them so we're yeah. going to see how the color changes and how much they shrink so Nikki's actually washed the same size of piece. yes how, I've, how I've, cut, you do? I've cut a six and a half inch square which is basically the size of my quilting ruler um, from each of them and then I've marked them all up with what they are I've put them all in the washing machine and just washed them on a standard wash that I would wash any fabric on. So yep. my, it's a 30 or 40 degrees, I think it's 30 degree wash. Um, and then I've hung them all out just to air dry and now I need to look at them once they're dry. We'll give them a press, we'll see whether they've shrunk and we can compare them to the original with how they feel, so the hand of them and also if the colour has changed yes. or the texture has changed, anything like that. Yeah, because it'll be useful for you to see. You know how sometimes when you first wash like a dark denim, sometimes you get those white marks in it. Um, mm. Sometimes uh, you can't ever get them pressed back the way that they were. Apparently, I read something on that today, mm. that that's excess laundry detergent. Oh. If you get white marks on your black jeans, if they come out of the wash and they've got white marks on them, then put them back in the washing machine and wash them again without any detergent whatsoever. And it should come out. They need more but, rinsing. But need more ah. rinsing. But do it before you dry it, because if you dry it, you will basically dry it into the fibres. Mm -hmm. So that's something else I learned today. Yeah, interesting. Um, just a font of information. <laughs> so in addition to raw and washed, the other term that you might see listed online is a rigid denim. Yes. And that's quite difficult to actually know what that means because it doesn't necessarily mean raw or washed. It's actually referring no. to how stiff it is. I, do, I, th I don't think it's a, a te I think it's, it's a term used by the fabric shops yes. to, to show how the feel of the denim is, yeah. that it feels stiffer, but it's not actually giving you any technical information. It's not saying whether it's washed or it's raw. It doesn't mean either of them. Well, those. sometimes they do, but in most instances, when you see something described as rigid denim, you see it a lot in ready-to-wear jeans, and it mm. means that it's not, there's no stretch in it. Yeah. It means that they are stiff denim, that there yes. is no stretch in it at all. Um, so don't be confused when you see rigid. It doesn't. It's not necessarily a third term. No. Um, um, most of them will either fit into the washed or the raw denim category, um, but rigid usually refers to how stiff it is and whether it has mm. any stretch. If you see rigid denim, it won't have any stretch, None that's guaranteed. Yes. And you know that if you're making a heavier weight, if you want a jacket weight, or mm. if you're making a heavier pair of jeans, that your rigid's gonna be quite safe. But you will need to look further into that fabric to actually find out whether it has been washed or whether you need to treat it like raw yes. denim. Yes, if you can find out. The other thing, just to point out, uh, uh, what, one thing we discussed the other day is if in any doubt 
request a sample mm. from the, the from the fabric store that you're buying it from. So if you are if you've fallen in love with the denim that's thirty pounds a meter, buy a sample so that you can feel it, you can pop it in the wash, you can sew on it, you can decide if that's the right one for you. Mm. And I think sometimes that is the best route to go down. Yeah. Um, it's not something that we often do as sewers. I think we should probably do it a bit more often. Um, especially get excited. Jeans. Yeah, especially <laughs> something like jeans. But I mean, yeah. it's not just because it's expensive if you should order a sample even no. if it's cheap at the cheaper end you should still order a sample because as we're discussing the whole point of us making jeans is we want them to last and denim yeah. by its very nature should last you know it's designed to last Absolutely. but you are going to get different qualities and you are mm. going to get different textures and before you make a decision about whether the denim you've chosen is right for the pattern that you had in mind it's definitely worth seeing it and whilst you're at it if you're ordering samples why not order a couple of others as well as backups because you might find that one of those is actually a more suitable option yeah. for you and you're not going to know for sure until you've seen it for yourselves. Or but ready, hopefully... Ready for the next pair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hopefully this will explain some yeah, of that. It will help you, definitely.